Okay, for this problem we're asked the following. If a silver bar with the dimensions 4 mm by 3 mm by 10 mm is initially at room temperature and we pass 15 amps of current through the bar for one minute, what would be the final temperature of the silver if we're given the specific heat and the density and the electrical resistivity? And then we're asked, well, what if the bar was made of nichrome, which has its different properties, considering that this material is commonly used as a heating element in blow dryers? So on a question like this, we are asked to do the following. We know that what the initial temperature is. We know that passing current through it, we want to figure out how much that heat is going to be generated because of that current. And then we want to figure out how much uh, temperature change that heat is going to translate to, assuming that it all goes into the material and isn't radiated away. So first, let's write up an expression for the amount of heat that should be generated when you pass a current through this material. We know that the heat which is generated should be proportional to the current squared times the total resistance multiplied by time. And then we know that the heat capacity is equal to the amount of heat that goes into a material to heat some amount of material, say mass, um, some change in temperature. Right? So using these two expressions, we can go ahead and solve this. The one thing that we need, though, is that we're given a resistivity, electrical resistivity, and this is a resistance. So we're going to need an expression to relate resistivity to resistance. And that's easy enough done. We know that the total resistance of something is equal to the resistivity times its length divided by its cross-sectional area. So if we assume that this sort of matchstick-shaped bar has the current passing this direction, so the 10 millimeters is the long direction, then we can go ahead and do this. Let's start writing it out. We know that Q is going to be equal to 15 amps squared times our resistance, which is going to be 15.87 times 10 to the negative 9 ohms meters, right? um, multiplied by the length. 0 0.01 meters divided by the cross-sectional area which is 4 millimeters by 3 millimeters so 0 0.004 meters by 0 0.003 meters and then we have to multiply this by time it's one minute let's go ahead and put that in seconds 60 seconds the reason we're going to put that in seconds is because we know that one ohm can be rewritten as one joule for amp squared times second. So by doing it this way, everything's going to cancel out. We're going to end up with just joules. So when I punch that in, I find that the total heat that we generate is equal to 0 0.1785 joules for silver. Doing the same analysis, but now with nichrome, we can recalculate this. It's the same numbers as before, except we're going to change the resistivity. The resistivity is no longer 15.87 nano ohm meters. It's 100 times 10 to the negative 8 ohm meters. And therefore, when we plug that in, I find that it's equal to 11.25 joules. So clearly, the silver is not generating as much heat as the nichrome. The nichrome is generating a lot more heat, which makes sense. They use it for heating elements. So the next step is to figure out how much temperature change are we going to see. Let's rearrange our expression. We can write that delta T should be equal to Q divided by the mass of our object multiplied by its specific heat. Well, that's easy enough. For silver, we can write that that is 0 0.1785 joules. That's going to be divided by the mass. Now, how do we get the mass? Well, we know that the mass is equal to the volume times density. So What's our volume? Our volume is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the negative 7 meters cubed. The density of silver is uh, I I it here 10.5 grams per centimeter cubed, or 10,500 kilograms per meter cubed. That's going to allow the meter cubed to cancel out. And then we multiply this by a specific heat which for silver is 2,330. 2,330, that has the units of joules 
per kilogram degree Kelvin. Punching everything in now, we find that our total change in temperature for silver is only 0 0.0608 degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Right? That's the change in T. So our final temperature is just going to be 25.061 degrees Celsius. So it barely heats up at all. And that should make sense because silver is a great conductor and it actually absorbs a fair amount of energy before it warms up. So let's move on to our next one, nichrome. Doing the exact same approach, we write that the delta T is going to be equal to now 11.25 joules. That's going to be divided by the same dimension, same volume, 1.2 times 10 to the negative 7 meters cubed. This time, the density of nichrome is only um, 8,400 kilograms per meter cubed. 8,400 kilograms per meter cubed. And the specific heat is lower as well. It's only 450. 450 joules per kilogram degree Kelvin. Punching all that in, we find that the change in temperature for nichrome is 24.8 degrees. So our temperature final is going to be equal to 25 plus 24.8 is equal to 49.8 degrees, degrees Celsius. So your blow dryer actually can warm up to a pretty warm temperature with only 15 amps, right? A, a typical home has electrical outlets that can deliver up to 20 or 25 or even 30 amps. So this can actually heat up pretty quickly. In one minute, it's already blowing pretty warm air if we assume that all the heat is going into heating that wire up.